Shane glanced back at the car, where Carmen and Birch stood. Birch had an arm draped over Carmen's shoulders. I'm seriously thinking about just putting a bullet through this bastard's skull right now. I swear to God. Don't. He's telling the truth. He's not the one who did this. It was the beasts. Don't speak again. Got it? The bastard nodded. Don't kill him, man. Let the sheriff department handle it from here. Amy's gonna be alright, but she ain't gonna be a happy camper if you're in prison. Shane nodded. He approached Birch's car, but never took the gun off the bastard. Carmen stepped toward him. She cautiously extended her hand out. Come on, Shane. Don't do anything crazy, please. Hand me the gun and we'll wait for the police together. You, me, and Birch. Shane inhaled and exhaled a deep breath. He grabbed Carmen by the shoulder and shoved her away. Shane leaned over Amy's motionless body in the back seat. With an ear pressed against her chest, he listened. Her heart thumped, but it was faint. He felt something hot and hard against his cheek. Some sort of reddish stone was glued to her chest. It suddenly glowed bright, as if somebody hit a switch and Amy's body lurched. Shit, what the fuck? He ducked out of the car. Where'd this weird stone come from? What stone? Shane lifted his chin, gesturing toward the psycho that hurt Amy. You give her this? I gave her nothing. With a punch to the roof, he ducked back into the car. Shane kissed Amy's forehead, her cheek, the bridge of her nose, and those sweet, sweet lips. Nothing. Not a moan or even a fucking twitch. With sweaty hands, he framed her face. Open your eyes, baby. He picked a leaf and a twig from her hair. Snap out of it. Shane kissed Amy on the lips. Please, babe, look at me. He let his forehead fall against her forehead. I'll kill him. I swear to God, I'll kill him. Straightening, he handed the gun to Birch. I'm gonna kill him. But I'm gonna do it with my fist. It wasn't him. Carmen, if you're gonna keep defending this psycho asshole, then you fuck the hell off, you goddamn whore. Birch took Carmen by the wrist. He dragged her to the other side of the car. Try not to fuck Birch while I'm beating this bitch to death. It's a good thing he gave you the gun. Cool night air caressed Shane's bare chest as he tossed his shirt to the ground. Casting a glance over his shoulder, he caught Birch's gaze. No matter what happens, you two don't interfere. We clear? Got it, Chief. You're making a mistake. Taking a defensive stance, fists in front of his face and body, Shane waggled his fingers. Let's do this. I mean no harm to any of you. I come for the beast only. She's not a beast. She's a woman, you crazy fuck. She's not the beast that I seek. Well, I'm all the fucking beast you're getting. I won't hurt you. But you have no problem hurting a woman? Shane drove forward, intending to pummel his face. <gasps> a soft, invisible wall bounced him backwards. The guy remained standing without wavering in his position. Shane charged faster this time. I can't hit this son of a bitch. We cannot harm one another. It is impossible. What the hell are you talking about? Take my hand. My pleasure, asshole. Shane clasped the outstretched hand. 
Multicolored sparks exploded inside his head, showering his mind with a billion rapid images and a sensation like a thousand tiny tendrils of lava rooted through his brain, down his spine, igniting his blood. Atticus let go of his hand. Atticus, his twin warrior. What the fuck is a twin warrior? And how the fuck do I know your name? Because the stars have chosen us to slay the beasts together.